Hello, my name is Sean Boyle and I teach at Southern Illinois University and in this video I'm going to cover the aftermarket improvements to the 722.6 Mercedes transmission. So hopefully you had a chance to watch some of these other videos like this mechanical video where I cover the power flow and the gear set and also this electronics video where I cover the solenoids and the transmission control module and its functions and how the solenoids can control some of the hydraulic features in this transmission and of course the hydraulics video where I go in depth on how they actually go through a shift in this transmission. How they use three shift groups and four valves per shift group to give you that perfect shift feel. Then also the torque converter video to show you the uniqueness of this torque converter, how it does things a little different, and then talk about some of the common failures that occur in these torque converters, which are one of the biggest failures in this transmission exist in that torque converter. And then of course the overhaul video where I from the very beginning to end, I disassemble this transmission, do all the measurements, put it back together. So by the time you're done with all this, you know how it operates and how to take it apart and put it back together. So this video here is going to focus on the aftermarket improvements, things that the aftermarket came up with to make this transmission live. So you might remember this here schematic from the hydraulics presentation, and we're going to kind of look at just a couple areas here, the areas that the aftermarket has focused in on and created improvements for. But first I want to talk about the general construction of the 722.6 valve body. Looking at how this valve body is constructed, you're going to see a few things that kind of make it stand out. One, similar to Superior Transmission Products valves, you can see these radial grooves that they've got cut around these valves. That's going to provide a place for oil to get in there and uh, also provide a place for debris to kind of find its way in to prevent hanging up a valve. If you also notice, there's a lot of these valves have a decent amount of support. There's a lot of aluminum supporting these valves. And that's actually a good thing when it comes to wear. Uh, the more support, the more aluminum that you have in there, the less of a chance of these bores wearing out. If you look at this pressure regulator valve, for example, it's got a decent amount of aluminum supporting either end. And another thing that helps reduce the amount of valve body wear is using a lower tension spring and uh, that's gonna have less of a chance of it side loading and cocking a valve in its bore. And you look over here, at this is the lubrication regulator valve. It actually has a fairly high tension, kind of a long spring that does not have as much aluminum supporting that valve. So this valve right here gets a lot of attention from the aftermarket because it commonly will wear out the bore and cause issues. So how do we go through and test this valve body to see if it's worn out? Well, vacuum testing is the easiest way to do it. If you uh, want to make your own vacuum tester, there's a link up here that will explain how to do it. It's pretty cheap, $150. You can see all these little red markings that I've got on there. I got those locations from sonics.com. You pick vacuum check guides, vacuum test guides, and find your transmission, 722.6, and it'll give you a printout of all the different places to check. And you can also see all these little plugs. Those are cut up little ear plugs. Sometimes the passageways are so long that you gotta kind of block them off so that way you can check them with your test plate. I'm not bothering going through this during this video. The reason why is because all the valve bodies I have here have zero miles on it and they all test out beautifully. So if you wanna see the actual process of me vacuum checking it and setting up and calibrating the gauge and all that stuff, you can go to the overhaul video. Or like I said, you, there's a separate video on how to construct your own vacuum test stand or station. But all these little passageways all are relevant to different valves in this valve body. And you're gonna go through and check to see if they have leakage. That's gonna to test to see if the valve to bore clearance is excessive. If it is, you're gonna to have to address it. And the way you address it is up to you. We're gonna cover later on in this video, you're gonna see Sonics options, Superior options, and Transgo options. So let's focus on a few areas that the aftermarket really pays attention to in this transmission. One is this pressure regulator valve. And if you've watched hydraulics or the electronics video, you probably already know how it works, but here's the Cliff Notes version of the oil pump. Right here is going to suck fluid in, and everything you see here in red is going to be line pressure. And at the end of this valve, we're going to sample that line pressure. It's going to move this valve over to the left. It's going to compress the spring, which are those little dots right there, and it's going to push out any of this green fluid, which is from the solenoid. It's the line pressure solenoid. And when it finally moves this valve over enough, you can see it opens up this passageway right there, and the line pressure finds its way into that purple passage and that gets delivered right to the inlet of the pump, effectively regulating the pressure. So that's how we regulate pressure in this transmission, is we move this valve over to the position that you see here, where it's just uncovering the release back into the inlet of the pump. If I want more pressure, my solenoid is gonna duty cycle off 
And when it turns off, it's gonna deliver more fluid pressure and add to the force of the spring. And when that moves it over, it's gonna block off my, uh, my release passage. It's gonna require more line pressure to work on the end of this valve to move it over. So that was a brief summary. Of course, like I said, it's in the hydraulics video and the electronics video where we get into the hydraulic operation a little bit more. This is more about improvements. So the aftermarket has looked at this end of the bore and also that end of the bore. If you leak fluid pressure out on this end of the bore, that fluid's gonna find its way to this vent, and if that fluid is venting out, we're not gonna build up pressure on this side, and that's not gonna give us the line rise. Remember, this pressure here is what helps the spring keep this valve over to the right to help build pressure. And so if I'm leaking out that fluid, find its way out through that vent, dropping on the other side of that orifice because of a worn out bore, then I won't have the line rise that I'm expecting. And now if this end of the bore is worn out, the Sonics information states that the line pressure is gonna be elevated. It's gonna be stuck higher than it should be. So we're gonna vacuum check those two to see if we have excessive leakage. If we do, we have a couple options. We can ream it out, put a Sonics valve, an oversized valve in there, or we can put a drop-in transgo valve, and we'll look at that here in a minute. Now another area of concern is this torque verter limit valve, which is also known as the lubrication regulator valve. Here's the blown up version of that. So we've got line pressure that comes in and that finds its way into the torque converter through the lockup control valve. This is, remember this is a three path converter. So I've got one path that's delivering fluid into the converter, one path that's delivering fluid out and then to the lube circuits, to the oil cooler. And then that third path, which is not colored in right now, is the lockup clutch. When the lubrication regulator valve bore wears out, has excessive leakage, I'm gonna end up with low pressure feeding into that torque converter. And the if you remember, going back to that torque converter video, the reason why that's such a big deal is because they rely on the pressure in the torque converter to keep the torque converter clutch applied piston released. So there's gonna be fluid behind that torque converter clutch applied piston. And if the engine's spinning and the torque converter's spinning, centrifugal force can drag that piston on. So I'm relying on the pressure in the torque converter to keep that piston released. If I drop that pressure because I've got a leak either at the valve bore here or at the valve bore there, the valve bore here, a leak there will cause line pressure to sneak in and move this valve over against its spring and cut off the passage that's really feeding the converter supply circuit there. So if I don't have enough pressure, centrifugal force can drag on that converter clutch and that's gonna cause stalling and an engine that feels like it's dragging. So not good. So that's something that we're gonna address. But there's good news. All the kit manufacturers make a solution for this. So Sonics, they go in and ream out this bore and put an oversized valve in there. Transgo, they've got a valve that rides in a sleeve and a new spring and a little spring stabilizer. And then Superior Transmission Products, they make their own oversized valve. They send you a reamer, a guide, and five valves in their kit so you could do five valves or five transmissions with one kit. We'll see that here in a second on the bench. Now another major failure for this transmission include these little bushings that ride on the end of these overlap valves. I got three of them right there. The one, two, four, five, the two, three, and the three, four. Now looking at this overlap valve, for example, if you remember by watching the hydraulics video, the overlap valve is responsible for controlling the rate of release for the releasing clutch. So if that is not working properly, you're going to have flares and issues like that. So the uh, Transgo and Sonics, they offer replacement overlap bushings. So that way, if this thing fails its vacuum check, we can go through and put those replacement bushings in. Good as gold. Now, another area that might fail in this transmission involve these solenoid regulator valves. I've got a solenoid regulator valve that feeds my shift pressure solenoid and my line pressure solenoid. And I also have the shift solenoid regulator valve. And the way that works, if you remember from the electronics video, is it takes line pressure and creates a maximum of 125 PSI, and that feeds the shift pressure and the line pressure solenoid, and also even feeds the shift solenoid in pressure. And the shift solenoid is gonna take that 125 PSI and knock it down to 50 to 55 PSI. So if these bores get worn out, I'm gonna affect the operation of my shift solenoids. Even more importantly over here, my pressure regulator solenoids, I'm not gonna be feeding them with the pressure that they need they're expecting between 60 and 125 PSI. If I'm not giving them that, they have no way of knowing and they're gonna pulse with modulate and deliver pressure to their valves, but it's gonna be the wrong pressure. That's not a good thing. 
So our three major kit suppliers, Transgo, Superior, and Sonics. Now, I did not put these in any particular order. I just went from the smallest logo to the biggest logo, so I'm not ranking them. Don't get on my case. Transgo creates a kit that addresses the major failures in this transmission. You can see these two springs here. They're kind of replacements for springs that can break, especially on the earlier units. And then these little uh, overlap bushings I just got done talking about that will restore normal, normal operation to those. We got a drop in pressure regulator valve that addresses any of the wear, especially on the solenoid end of that pressure regulator valve. And then this is that lubrication regulator valve. You can see it's got its own little spring stabilizer and bushing that the steel valve fits into and uh, a new spring. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at those on the bench. I'll probably install these into my cutaway valve body so we can see how things are different on the original one versus the Transco kit. So I've got my Transco kit in front of me and you can see they address the pressure regulator valve. We'll take a look at that. The lubrication regulator valve, we'll take a close look at that. Then I've got my 2-3 and my 3-4 overlap valve. So this upper valve body gets a pretty good portion of this kit. The instructions are pretty well laid out. On the first page, they just give you some identifications of the solenoids. They actually give you a hint. It says replace those solenoid O-rings because they shrink, that would be bad and that the conductor plate has got common failures. Realize that. Reset torque converter clutch adaption values after the, after the repair and before the road test. Then when we flip the page, we get over to our repair work upper valve body. So taking a close look at what they're doing here with their pressure regulator valve, you can see that they addressed anywhere that could occur in the pressure regulator valve bore on the solenoid side by adding additional material to their valve. So the part that would not be contacting the bore, which is right over here, their valve now contacts that. So if this bore is worn out, their steel valve is going to ride on an unused portion of the valve body bore, and it's going to provide a new seal. So this is Transgo's lubrication regulator valve. And what they've got going here is really slick. The original lubrication regulator valve, if that bore wears out here, we're going to potentially leak line pressure through that bore and trap it on the end of this balance portion. Now the way the transgo works, the transgo valve works, is it replaces, their sleeve there replaces that section of the bore and they machine their own valve that fits inside there. And you might be like, well, wait a minute, what about that bore wear? We're still gonna get fluid past that and that'll get on the end of this and it's not gonna really fix anything. Actually, they've kind of created this little section here null and void by the way they designed it. If you notice, it's plugged off on the back, it's capped off, and then their valve has a hole that's drilled, basically diagonal from that point to that point right there on the valve. So line pressure is gonna find its way to the end of that valve and sample it and push on the end of that valve and compress a spring as opposed to doing it through the valve body. So by putting this in there, We've capped this off so that the, pre there's the pressure that's on this side doesn't affect this valve at all. And you're like, well, wait a minute, pressure on that side, what if it moves this whole sleeve over? Well, that's where this other half of the valve comes into play. That'll actually pin that sleeve between the plate and the end of the bore. So now I've got my valve, and that also will help stabilize that spring. Kind of, the spring lives in there. So now everything lives inside its own kind of captured passageway and bore. Really a brilliant design. It's a way from having to ream this out. You don't have to ream it, you can just drop this valve in. But then of course the other fixes that they've got are these bushings. And on this upper valve body half we've got the 2-3 and the 3-4 overlap bushing. These bushings are all different. So Transgo identifies these bushings by putting a little dimple like this dimple right here indicates that's for the 2-3 overlap valve. So that will go right here. And the two dimples represents that it's for the 3-4 overlap valve. So that'll go right there. And then my 1-2-4-5 does not have a dimple on it, and it'll go in the lower valve body. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in. I might do some measurements, and we'll see what we got. So after going through and measuring these valve lands with the micrometer, there's no difference in the diameter. The only difference is, is that the valve land on the steel transgo valve is twice as long as the one on the OE valve. It chokes down quite a bit right there, whereas you can see it's twice as long 
approximately on the transgo valve. So that's going to ride on a previously unused portion of the valve body bore, and that's where it reestablishes its seal. Pretty nice. It doesn't really deal with the bore wear that could occur on the reaction end or the balance end of this valve, the tip of it, the small diameter. But with as much meat, as much aluminum as you have here, I have a hard time believing that that portion wears out that much anyway. So here I got the transgo valves laid out in this valve body. And this is the pressure regulator valve. You can see that extra surface area that we've got on this valve land now. It's going to be contacting valve body bore material that's never been used. So that's going to reestablish its seal. Pretty nice design there. You reuse the original pressure regulator spring. Really, the surface areas and everything is the same on this valve body. The only thing they've done is they've added material right there. This regulator valve is pretty cool that we have that set up. Since the end of it is capped off, they can basically nullify any bore leakage that's going to occur right here on this end. If you remember, that valve had a hole diagonally drilled through it, so the line pressure that goes in here is going to work on the end of the valve inside that bushing, inside there, to compress the spring and move it over to the regulating position. So any of the leakage that's going to occur in this area is kind of nullified because it's its own little self-contained bushing and valve assembly in there. And then this sleeve right here is going to keep it locked over to the right as we see it, so that way if there is any leakage, that line pressure can't find its way and try to move this whole sleeve over. Without that bushing in there, without this sleeve right there, line pressure through the leak would try to move this whole bushing assembly over, and then that would be bad. So definitely don't forget to put this in there. You need that. And then, of course, here's our 2-3 overlap. You can tell it's identified by that single little dimple mark right there. No dimple is for the 1, 2, slash 4, 5. One dimple is for the 2, 3. And then two dimples would be for the 3, 4. Now for the lower valve body, they've got a couple springs that are kind of known for breakage. This first one is for the solenoid regulator valve. Now, if you have a later valve body like this one, you would not need to change this. Matter of fact, you don't want to change it because the redesigned valve is completely different. So is the spring. And also for the 2 3 shift pressure valve, that spring is known for breaking. So you'd want to inspect that and go ahead and change it with its supplied spring. So that's the Transgo kit. And as it states right here on their instructions, this kit is designed to correct, prevent, or reduce insufficient pressurized 2 3 shift flare, torque converter clutch slip or shutter, soft shifts, and shutter on hard throttle acceleration from a stop. And they do, do that by modifying the pressure regulator valve addressing the torque converter clutch uh, pressure, the, the torque converter clutch limit pressure, or the lubrication regulator valve, replacing some potentially broken springs, and by addressing those overlap bushings. So next we're going to go and we'll take a look at the superior valve, because that requires a little bit of reaming. Superior creates one valve for this transmission. It's the lubrication regulator valve. It's like we've been talking about. That's the common failure in this transmission. So their kit includes five lubrication regulator valves, Includes this jig so that way we can ream out the bore and it centers it perfectly. So when we run a reamer through there, it makes a nice precise hole. And we got a buddy brush here to polish that bore up. And after you're done with five transmissions, they recommend you get a new reamer. So that's why they sell the kit with the reamer and five valves. Now, if that reamer was in perfect shape, you can actually buy individual valves, but they do recommend you just buy the kit with a new reamer because you don't want to ream out the bore with a damaged reamer or worn out reamer. I'm going to say reamer a couple more times. We are going to go over to the bench and I'm going to demonstrate how to use this. I'm going to try to demonstrate this on my cutaway valve body, which might turn out horrible because when I made my cutout valve body, I cut out two of these bolt holes. So I'm actually going to only be able to mount their jig with two bolts. So we'll give it a try. What's the worst that can happen? So now we're going to talk about Superior's Lubrication Regulator Valve Bore Kit. What they do is they ream out the valve body bore a little bit to fit their oversized lubrication regulator valve. And they give you five of these valves in a kit. They also give you this jig and this pilot, so that way you can bolt this up to the valve body, snug it up with the bolts while this thing moves in and out of this uh, lubrication regulator bore nice and smoothly. That ensures that this jig is perfectly centered to the lubrication regulator valve bore. That way, when I take this reamer 
and I guide this reamer into that lubrication regulator bore, I'm going to get a nice perfect straight hole. And they give you specific instructions on how to ream this valve body bore out. They never want you to spin this counterclockwise. And they want to flood this with a coolant like a, or cutting fluid like WD-40, they say works well. You stop frequently and blow the chips out and clean it out. And when you're done, and this bore is all bored in all the way down to the bottom, you're going to spin this buddy brush in there. You're going to spray a little bit of WD-40 on it. And you're going to sit there and go back and forth in this buddy brush at high speed on your drill so that way you can polish that bore. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. I'm going to try this on my cutaway valve body. I'm, it's not guaranteed that it's going to work on that because I only have two of the four bolt holes left. And those bolt holes are what's going to align this jig with only two of them. It might not line it up perfectly, but I'm willing to try it. If it doesn't work, I got a fresh valve body over there I can do the process on and that way we can see how well this, this valve fits inside this bore. And the beauty of this setup right here is that when you buy this kit, you get enough to do five transmissions. It's not that expensive of a kit either. So you got five valves, a buddy brush, the reamer and the jig. And after you've done five, if this reamer is in perfectly good shape, you could buy additional valves, but they recommend that you get a new kit because this reamer is gonna wear out eventually. And when it does, you're obviously gonna possibly introduce a problem. So you're better off doing five transmissions and getting a brand new kit. So before I go through and ream this, I figured I'd do a couple measurements. The reamer they send you is 406 and 2 ten thousandths. It's actually labeled right on, on the reamer itself, but I checked it. And then the valve that they give you is a little more than 405 thousandths. I'm gonna guess they run just about a one thousandths clearance between the valve and the bore. And the OE valve is about 393 thousandths. So looks like we're reaming about 12 thousandths of material out and we're getting about one thousandths of an inch, maybe a little less, maybe eight, ten thousandths after we're done reaming it um, between the new valve and the bore. So you run these bolts in on your aluminum jig there and then you back them off a little bit because what you want is this alignment jig to be a little loose there in the very beginning. So that way I can slide my alignment pin in there and this aligns the jig to the bore. And there's a step right there on this alignment pin and that step is going to stop right when it gets to that little first step on that bore. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this down in there. And once it's pretty much up against that first step of that bore, I'm going to go ahead and snug up these Allen bolts. They want you to tighten these bolts to 54 inch pounds. I'm using my calibrated thumbs to figure that out. As long as this pulls in and out nice and easy, then I know it's in alignment. I'm ready to ream. So as you can see, they want you to gingerly clamp the valve body and device. I've got the lunch tray that I stole from the cafeteria. And as you can see right there, there's a tiny little hole. That's a hole that I can feed like a WD-40 spout. I can hose it down while I'm reaming it. They want you to use a drill that spins at 100 RPM. Now this is the only drill I've got and the low speed says zero to 500 RPM. So that's 500 RPM. I'm gonna wanna spin it at 100, so I'm gonna have to throttle it down. Basically one and a half to two turns per second, it states in the service info. I can see the, I can see the made in the USA mark right there. That's about as fast as I want to go. It's not very fast, so you got to be aware of that or else you're going to ruin the reamer and potentially the valve body. Not good. So the service info so graciously reminds us to wear safety glasses, which is a good thing. And I'm going to go ahead and pull my alignment pin out. Got this clamped in there. Now they're going to remind us that this needs to spin about one to one and a half turns per second. They want us to pre-lube everything. And they actually got, like I said, this little hole there on the side that allows us to put a steady kind of flow of WD-40 into that hole. They want us to pre-lube our, our reamer. 
This is gonna get everywhere, isn't it? Now they also recommend that you do this with two people, but I don't have any friends, so I don't have two people. This is probably gonna be a little easier for me because it's all open over here, but in a normal situation, when I'd be reaming this out, you'd probably want to stop frequently, blow the chips out, and flush it with this WD-40. But I'm gonna just kind of pretend as if this is a complete valve body. They state in the instructions to let the drill weight kind of provide the pressure, and to go slower is better, so don't rush it, and to provide a steady stream of WD-40. So they also note that this first inch is gonna be a lot of cutting because it's all aluminum, there's no casting passages or anything like that. Seem like that worked okay to me. Now we can take our bolts out, our guide off, and put these parts away, move on to the buddy brush, polish the board. I'm not certain how the buddy brush is gonna work since only two thirds of my valve body board is there, but we'll give it a try. Make sure you store your reamer in its little plastic case so it doesn't get banged around in your toolbox. Now with the buddy brush, they want you to spray it down a little bit, kind of coat the little whiskers, and they want you to operate this at high speed. And then you work at in the bore for about 15 to 20 seconds. All right, look at that. Nice fresh bore. There's that superior valve. Slides in there beautifully. A nice fresh restored bore. Now we're ready to put it back together. So Sonics makes a lot of things for this transmission. And if you didn't know, they own a company called Valbody Express. So they're in the business of rebuilding valve bodies. So if you're rebuilding valve bodies, you're gonna have to address anything that's worn out. So they've got tooling and valves and you know to basically address any worn bore. So you're gonna see a lot of product that you might not ever need in this transmission. That's the reason why vacuum testing is so important. But if you do need it, you can get the reamers and the valves to restore just by any valve body. And if you also remember, Sonics has that vacuum test guide. And the vacuum test guide gives you all the information and links to the different valves that uh, they supply. So if you check these different areas and you found some failures, you can click on their product links that they've got and that will take you towards the page, the information page that has the valve and uh, the instructions and how to test to see if it's good or bad. On the bench, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of these Sonics things. I don't have as many Sonics valves as I'd like, but we're gonna be able to look at things like they've got this drop-in torque converter clutch dampener right here, and we'll also be able to ream out a solenoid regulator valve. That sounds exciting. Now, Sonics is also another company that provides solutions to valve body wear. And as I mentioned before, they have tons of different reamers and valves. And really to determine what you need, you need to vacuum check this valve body. And you're gonna find, it's kind of like the Transgo kit or the Superior kit, likely failures are gonna be things like the lubrication regulator valve, maybe the um, uh, pressure regulator valve, these little bushings on the end of the overlap valves. Now with these overlap bushings, they have what's available called a zip valve, Z-I-P. And anything that is a zip valve does not require reamers or any special tooling. Um, they're drop-in valves. And in this case, with these overlap bushings, they use an O-ring to pro provide a good seal between the bushing and the valve body itself. And then, of course, they machined a nice fresh slug of aluminum to deal with the valve inside the bushing. And they are identified. You can see this has three small notches. That's for the 3-4. This has two small notches, that's for the two, three, and that has one small notch, that's for the one, two, slash four, five. So another zip valve that I've got is this torque converter clutch damper valve. I got a couple O-rings right there, and that seals off against the worn bore in the valve body. 
and it provides a new valve and a new spring that will now take the place of the original damper spring. There's a little slot right there that clips it in so that the sleeve itself doesn't end up moving in the valve body bore. So yes, they do have some, va some valves that are just zip valves. You just put some O-rings on, put it together, and you're good. But a lot of these valves do require reaming, and I'm going to demonstrate that. I'm going to use the solenoid regulator valve. When I go through and ream this out, I'm going to replace it with this new anodized valve and their new valve spring. There's something else that they're also going to have you check, depending if you have the early design or late design, they're going to give you a tiny little slug. Pretty easy probably to misplace that. And they're going to give you a sixteenth of an inch drill bit. And you're going to check to see if you have a hole on your spacer plate right there where I put the question mark. If you do have a hole right there, that means you have an early design and what they're going to want you to do is drill that hole out with the 62 thousandths drill bit, chamfer the top and the bottom of it with an eighth inch or three sixteenths inch drill bit, and then put that slug in there and flatten that slug out, basically blocking that hole off. Because their new valve design, really what it does is it updates the early valve body to the late valve body design. But since ours does not have that hole, we don't need to mess with that. We can kind of put that slug and that drill bit off to the side because we won't need to use that. So I'm going to go ahead and take the side plate off and I'm going to remove these valves. I'm going to go ahead, just like on the superior valve, I'm going to see if I can't ream my cutaway valve body. So I'll have the demonstration be able to be done right here on this cutaway valve body. If it doesn't work. I've always got that fresh valve body over there I can do it on. So Sonics has this valve body alignment fixture. What it includes is this gimbal. And this gimbal is going to guide that reamer. And the reason why they developed this is sometimes the passageways in the valve bodies, depending on how they're machined, it might not be perfectly parallel to their mounting face or the worm track or the machined bottom of the valve body. So if you use this alignment fixture and you have a guide that goes in there and you tighten this up, it's going to make a perfect alignment to the bore and we don't even have to worry about whether the edges are flat or the bottom is flat. It's going to be aligned to the original bore, which is a better way to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align my fixture up to that valve body bore. So I stick my pilot in there and I insert it as far as it can go. So now I'm going to go ahead and clamp my valve body down to this big alignment plate. I'm just going to use a couple welding clamps. Get on either side of it. So with the pilot in there, I'm going to go ahead and evenly snug down these wing nuts. Just with hand force. I should be able to slide this pilot in and out at this point. At this point, this alignment jig is perfectly lined up with that valve body bore. So when I go in with my reamer, I know I'll be at a straight shot right through the center of that valve body bore. So just like Superior, you're going to want to control your speed when you ream with this. 100 RPM is good. I know a lot of people that just do this by hand using a speed handle. Uh, a lot of people recommend using some kind of a wobble joint right here so you're not putting some side load. I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to go ahead and use a drill, spin it slow like I did with that Superior reamer. A lot of people do use various fluids for this. They use anything from ATF to WD-40. Uh, Sonics recommends a reaming type fluid. They recommend a water-soluble fluid. A lot of people that do a lot of reaming, they have a, a tub that they have this set up in. So they actually have a pump pumping coolant into it. That's a great setup. I don't really do it that frequently, so I don't have that setup. But I do have a generic water-soluble cutting fluid that I use. It's called Rustlick. It's kind of an all-purpose thing. It says everything from cutting to reaming to grinding. So that's what I use. I don't know if it's the right thing, the best thing. Like I said, some people use ATF. Some people use WD-40. As long as you're using something, I think it's better than nothing. And uh, preferably, you would follow Sonics' instructions and use what they recommend.
And of course, like we said, don't ever spin it backwards. So even when you're removing it, go ahead and spin it a little bit while pulling it out. And there you have it. And clean this off and we'll see what it looks like. The bore looks mighty fine. Did a good ream job right there. And when you're done, clean off your reamer, get all the chips and all the cutting fluid off of it and store these things. I like to store all these back into the sleeves that they came in. It helps protect them from getting banged around by the other tools that are in my kit. All right, let's see how well this goes back together. Look at that, isn't that nice? So I'm gonna see how well this torque converter clutch damper valve works in here. It's got this machine groove and a couple O-ring grooves and the O-ring grooves are designed to seal off against a worn accumulator or damper bore. And then this groove right here on the top is, uh, is designed to accept this circlip on the other side of the valve body. So it'll click in. Now, of course, this is a cutaway. So I'm looking at it from the opposite end. But I'm gonna see how it slides in. I put a little bit of trans gel on those O-rings to kind of help me out there a little bit. And you slide that to the end. And then from the other side, I'm gonna pop this clip in because obviously you normally wouldn't be able to see that side. So that clip in there is what keeps that sleeve from coming out when pressure gets behind it. Otherwise, this whole thing would move like a, like a valve in itself. We don't want that to happen. So now it's just a matter of having my, my new valve in there. I didn't leave it in there when I slid everything in. Put my new spring. And now my torque ver clutch damper is ready to go. So there you have it. All three kit companies do a great job of solving some of the issues with these valve bodies. If you go through and do your diagnostics and your vacuum checks, and you find that lubrication regulator valve is really the only issue you've got, that superior kit is hard to beat. Five transmissions worth of uh, repair in one kit. Very cost effective. Now, if you're going through and checking and you find your pressure regulator valve, especially at the solenoid end, it's also got issues. Maybe the Transgo kit, they've got a great fix for the lubrication regulator circuit but they also have that drop-in valve for the pressure regulator. In addition, they also have overlap bushings, which cure those common issues. And they also give you a couple springs in there that commonly break. So an excellent kit, very comprehensive. But if you find out you've got some other issues, some solenoid regulator valve, some, maybe some shift pressure valves, uh, you know, other valves that are worn out, even the manual valve, maybe Sonics is the way to go. Sonics will be a little bit more expensive, other than their zip kit options, which are drop-in valves, but the Sonics ones require a little bit more tooling with their reamers and so forth. But if you find yourself doing these transmissions quite a bit, it's pretty hard to beat the quality that you get from a Sonics repair. Now, I feel like I should mention that there's a modification that some people are doing to these transmissions to help cure torque converter clutch shutter. And I do not recommend this whatsoever. Uh, if you Google this, you'll find information on it, maybe see some other YouTube videos on it. And they say that it works only on Sprinter vans. I do not recommend this, though. Let me state this a million times, do not recommend it. And this reason why I'm pointing it out is to kind of show you what they're doing when they go through this modification, how I don't think that this could be a good modification at all. They're drilling a hole right at the end of this lockup control valve. Now, if you didn't watch the torque converter video, which I highly recommend you do, the way that this controls lockup is that the solenoid works on this end of the valve and moves it over. Line pressure exists right there at that last passage. And when this valve moves over far enough, it lets line pressure into the apply circuit. You might be able to see I've got an L and an, and an A and a V listed there. So when line pressure finds its way into the apply circuit, now that's the apply pressure. If you notice this surface area on this side is larger than the surface area over here. So as it lets in line pressure, that line pressure that lets in is gonna to try to close this valve over. It's gonna move the valve over to the left as shown. Well, the solenoid, as it, more it turns on, the more force it puts on, on this end of the valve, it's gonna move this valve over more, let more line pressure in until there's enough line pressure in there to close it back off. So they're basically gonna operate this thing pretty much in this position right there. Well, by drilling a hole on the end of this valve through this plate, you're gonna bleed off some of that solenoid pressure. If that solenoid pressure bleeds off, I'm not gonna have much force applying my lockup. 
so it's going to be slipping the lockup clutch. So by drilling a hole and bleeding off that solenoid pressure at the end of this valve, you're going to result in lower torque converter apply pressure. And that lower torque converter apply pressure is going to cause more torque converter clutch slip. It's going to cause more heat. You're possibly going to get some slip codes. Either way, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't recommend it at all. Definitely, um, I would never do it. But hey, that's just me. Thank you for watching this video and also thank you to Transgo, Superior, and Sonic for providing me with that product to display and show you guys in this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and thank you for watching.